This video is about client-server computing, where two computers communicate by passing messages. I will now present some slides for this video. In this example, I will demonstrate how to set up a client-server system. The example was originally created by Inmos, but I've translated this example into Java code, and it runs on two projects, a client project and a server project. The goal is to calculate the square root of a number using this function here. Value is a value, for example, of 100, and over a period of time, this system iterates to produce a value of 10. So, the client sends run 100 and the estimate. The server returns a new estimate. The new estimate is passed into an old, the, into the old estimate variable, and then the process repeats again. And over a period of time, this value will eventually converge on the value 10. So the client sends run value estimate old uh, f f with 25 loops. After the 25th loop, the value, the, uh, the this is passed in stop. The, the client receives a new estimate from the server and then it updates this, calculates, puts a new estimate into the old estimate variable. And this process loops around until you get a solution. The server waits for a connection. And when it receives run value est old, it then uh, moves down and it converts uh, the, the values coming in. Uh, in this example here, it reads in the, the estimate string. And the string is converted to a float value using this block of code. Here we've got the, uh, the calculation that I've described on the preceding slide. The new estimate is then converted back using this uh, this arrangement here to a string, and then the string is sent back. So it's strings that are sent in both directions. If you're interested in any of the um, the projects described on this channel, you can download the source code in zip format from this address here. I've loaded Newton Raffson client and Newton Raffson server into NetBeans. And this is the client process. It's got uh, 127001, which is the loopback address. It sends three strings. Run. The output value, in this case 100. And the estimate. The new estimate is passed into the old, and then it loops around. It does this for 25 loops. And eventually it will send the words st string stop to stop the process. I'm now going to look at the server code. We have a socket. Some initial values for the strings. Okay, so the system waits uh, for, for input, it reads the string, the control string, it then reads the uh, the value, this is an integer, and then it reads the uh, estimate, which is a float. These, this block of code converts the in the value string uh, to a val to the value, and this one converts float, uh, sorry, a string coming into a float, and then down here we've got the the calculation that we're taking place, and here what what's happening is it uh, it converts the new estimate back to a string and sends it back again, and this will carry on until um, twenty five loops have been carried out. This is the boolean variable. It is important to start the actual uh, server before the client, so we run the 
in the server. So now the server is running, it's waiting for a connection. And we run the um, client process. Make sure I've connected to it. And now you see the, the values iterating. Move it up so it's uh, more visible. So you can see that it's now converged on the value 10. It only takes about uh, 10 iterations, 10 loops to actually get the answer. Now it stops, and if we actually, there you are. So if we look at the server, the server waits for a connection, and then it returns an estimate. We notice this value here is getting closer and closer to the final solution. And if we move right down to the end, we can see that it's uh, eventually received a message stop because it's got to the 25th uh, loop. Uh, okay. In the next video, I will show how to run the client on a PC and the server on a Raspberry Pi. I hope you found this video interesting.